Uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. And for Dr. Yang, good morning. Uh, we're very glad to have Dr. Shen Feng Yang, or you can call him Terry, to join us today. And he's assistant professor from University of Utah and you know, uh, applying machine learning in uh, connected and automated vehicle, transition equity, and also transition planning. And he's a recent, most recent NSF Career Award recipient. Congratulations on that, Terry. Um, yes, and as a junior professor, he's very productive. He has published more than 100 peer review papers in journals and conferences. And he's also very active involved in the professional organization and even you know, as a junior faculty taking the leadership role in some professional organizations. And uh, Terry obtained his degree, a uh, bachelor degree from Tsinghua University, a top university in China, and also the uh, master's and PhD degrees from University of Maryland. So Terry, again, we're so glad to have you and the floor is all yours. Look forward to your presentation. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction, Dr. Zhang. And uh, so let me share my screen. Um, yeah, I guess I'm sharing right, right yes. now, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, good morning. Oh, actually, good afternoon, everyone. So it's still morning in, in Utah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity to share my uh, research related to machine learning application in transportation. Um, so the title of my presentation today is uh, Physics Rectorialized uh, Machine Learning for uh, Smart Mobility. Um, so uh, nowadays we have seen uh, many uh, machine learning applications in, in transportation where uh, the majority of them are related to, to smart mobility system applications. And uh, so today I would, uh, I would like to focus on uh, one uh, aspect which is related to the macroscopic traffic flow modeling uh, because the traffic flow modeling usually serve as a foundation of many traffic operation, traffic control and traffic management task in the, in the smart mobilities. And even for the, uh, under the connected autonomous vehicle environment, we, we're gonna need the traffic flow model to support the understanding of the uh, urban mobility and, and then to design the, uh, the, 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 the control plan and trajectory uh, control plan for, the, for those smart vehicles. So here, um, the macroscopic traffic flow refers to the traffic streams variables such as the speed and flow and density. And so in, in early stage, um, uh, the, the traffic dynamics were found to be very similar to uh, hydrodynamics. So in early, in, in early days, uh, researchers in transportation, they kind of borrowed the concept from the fluid mechanism, and then they uh, used uh, um, some, some theory there to develop the, uh, what do we call fundamental diagram to represent the correlation amount, uh, flow density and speed, and, and that is the, um, the early stage of work in the in, in the in the macroscopic traffic flow theory, and um, um, so we have seen um, the uh, um, the potential value of those models in capturing the traffic dynamics. But um, there there are indeed some limitation of those classical traffic flow models uh, because in in practice we have been observing uh, many data issues. Uh, for example, the data noise uh, usually generated by the traffic sensors. So that will definitely be the first issue we, we commonly observed in practice. And the second one is the data fluctuation over different uh, different time of day. So uh, because with the strong uh, uh, assumptions, those uh, classical traffic flow models, uh, they are based on the maybe the physics laws and and and, and, and also a lot of strong assumptions, they, they may be able to capture the trend of, of the, 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 the change of the trend uh, the trend of the change of, of, of traffic flow uh, in practice, but they may not be able to capture the data fluctuation and, and also the, uh, the data noises uh, in, in practice. So that's why uh, in more recent years, people start to look at the stochastic traffic flow models. So the first category is uh, usually we call the stochastic extension. So in, in this category, uh, basically, they still rely on the original formulation of the traffic flow models, but they Kind of add a stochastic attention to the model expressions. So, for example, they can add uh, the Gaussian noise to the model expression and, and assume the 
the, the data noise uh, is the, it, it, it follow the uh, Gaussian distribution where it's kind of a white noise. And then they use the data from sensor to quantify those noise or dis distribution of those noise. Um, but we do see a, a lot of limitation of this type of approach, even though it, it would be somehow uh, captured the uh, data fluctuation in practice. But since we still have a very strong assumption in terms of the noise, um, uh, so, so this type of model still have a lot of lim limitations in, in practice. And the second, second category is the stochastic formulation. And uh, so there's uh, several representative models such as Boltzmann based model, uh, a Markovian QM network, secular automation based model, so and so forth. So those type of stochastic formulation um, is more like a data driven models and they're they are, they are basically not treated as an analytic model anymore because of the, um, the, the new formulations. So um, nowadays, uh, with the increasing of the data availability, we have seen uh, a lot of data-driven uh, based or machine learning models has been implemented to model the, uh, the, the transmission problems. And, and, and also a lot of them have been implemented to model traffic flow uh, series. And so there's uh, so many uh, different type of machine learning model that can be used to uh, model the traffic flow patterns. So um, here I just lead a, a, a few uh, popular uh, models here, uh, including the uh, maybe the, the Bayesian network kernel regression, uh, random forest, and, and, and neural network. So those are uh, uh, very popular models that has been implemented in, in transportation. So um, those machine learning models definitely have their, their, their a lot of benefits. Uh, firstly, you, you just need to get grab the data, then then you can develop the model. And in some case, uh, 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 even the quick and dirty model can give a very uh, good performance and, and uh, compare with the classical trifold models. So that's why we have seen many, many, many researchers have to shift their research direction to the data-driven uh, routine and, 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 and start to focus on machine learning model development. So have, however, uh, we have, at the same time, we have also observed the gap between the traditional uh, traffic flow models and also those uh, more state-of-the-art uh, data-driven approaches. So, so in, during the, maybe the past uh, 50 years, uh, a, a lot of our transportation researchers, they devote so much, so much effort to uh, formulate those traffic flow models. But nowadays, when we have the data science involved in our transportation task, and they look at the problem, and they said, OK, um, we appreciate your model, and your model looks very cute, but I don't really care. Just give me the data. So then I will build up the machine learning models. So I don't really care about your traffic flow model, and just give me the data, and I will represent the same uh, model performance and with just data driven or machine learning models. So um, here um, we, we, we do observe there's a actual gap um, uh, between the classical traffic flow model and the, those uh, data driven or machine learning models. And so there are actually two questions we need to answer over here. The first one is, are those machine learning models perfect? Uh, because not just for those data scientists who has no background in transportation, even for, for a lot of uh, transmission researchers, they, they kind of ignore the valuable com contribution of the, uh, of the traditional researchers in, in the classical knowledge in, in, or domain knowledge in transportation and completely shift to the data-driven routine to, to develop the models. But uh, the first, uh, first error question here we need to answer is, are those machine learning models perfect? So we definitely know the answer would be uh, no, right? Um, because uh, because of the data-driven nature, uh, the majority of the machine learning model performance will rely on the data quality. So that means, firstly, you have you should have enough data for you to use. Second, the data quality should be good. If your data is bad and your training data set is bad, then your model performance would be bad. And the second question is, what is the role of transmission researchers here? So now with with the adoption of the machine learning model and, 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 and the majority of the machine learning theory has been developed by the data scientists or computer scientists. So if we just borrow the, uh, with, with the, the model from them, we just grab the model from them for, uh, and, and do the application in transition, then we can imagine maybe after 20 or 30 years when people get familiar with the transmission problems. So why bother 
even have the transmission engineering discipline in under civil engineering. Why not just give pass all of our students to computer science to study for data scientists uh, uh, to to study data science and and let them come back to address the transmission problems because everybody everyone's driving and people are very easy to get familiar with transmission problems. So the second question is. Uh, how we can identify or think the role of transmission researchers in the future world, especially under the in the in the era of of, of high technology. So with that, those uh, questions in our mind, uh, actually uh, one one uh, of our recent observ observation is uh, uh, even though uh, the, 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 those data scientists they know how to build up the machine learning model, but they basically lack the domain knowledge to have a deeper understanding of our engineering problems. So if our student can get a, get a good training on data science and to know uh, how to make fundamental contributions in, in, in those uh, uh, data-driven uh, models such as machine learning, uh, I, we have observing even our student will be more job market competitive compared with those uh, computer science, science students in the, in, in the specific engineering, engineering domain. So, uh, that's why, with those such motivation, uh, our study here aims to develop a, a new modeling uh, theory. It's called a physics regularized machine learning. So uh, basically, the the core concept of this physics regularized machine learning (PRML) is to uh, bridge the gap between the uh, classical uh, domain knowledge and uh, the state of the art machine learning series. So compared with the classical trifold models, the PRML can effectively capture the data uncertainties and also can you reduce the, the effort in the model calibrations because for the for those traditional model they uh, you you have to spend a lot of efforts to calibrate the model parameters and um, compared with the machine learning models uh, this prml is actually more robust or more resilient to data noise uh, when you have some uh, some noise in the training data set and also the prml is more uh, explainable or much easier to interpret in terms of the model performance. So later we're going to use a case study to show um, uh, the, 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 the statement over here. OK, so here I want to use a, a very a simple example to, sh to show the benefit of the uh, PRML. So, th the, so this figure shows the, the data we collected. So here we have the, uh, the, the block dots are the accurate data or, or, the, or the good data, and we have the blue ones are the flawed data. So imagine if we, we, we have no idea about how to identify the flawed data, we just grab all the data and build up the machine learning model. So then you, we will get this uh, dash line. And if we have a capability of eliminate all flawed data, so then we can come on another machine learning model with which is a solid line. So by comparing these two lines, we can see that by using all of the model, then uh, we, 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 we are expecting to have a very bad performance of the model. Uh, uh, in terms of the dash line, right? Because of the impact of the flawed data. Um, but um, if we can implement the 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 the, uh, the PRML model, which bring the uh, the classical traffic flow theory to regularize the machine learning training process, so then we can got the second dash line, even though we're using all of the data. So compare the, the, the dash line with this solid line, which is a, 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 a good model. So then we can see the difference would be much smaller. So this uh, a simple uh, example shows the capability of the PRML, which is much more resilient to the data noise. So even you you uh, you grab the data that contain a lot of noise and or flawed data points, then we can still have a good performance. <clears throat> OK, so um, in, in this study, we uh, because you, when we talk about the machine learning, there's so many machine learning models available. So in this study, we uh, basically leverage the Gaussian process as a base machine learning model. So then this model is further called physics regularized the Gaussian process, PRGP. Um, so here I, I would like start to talk about the, the theory and with one uh, specific application in uh, traffic state estimation. So, so the traffic state estimation for short TSC is a first step of many traffic operation tasks in the smart mobility systems. So, um, because uh, by looking at this figure, uh, that's briefly show the uh, the purpose of a TSE. So, in practice, we may have the traffic sensors installed on the freeway or, or different high type of highways, and that tra those traffic sensors can provide us the speed and the traffic flow information, 
at, at those location with the installed sensors. So however, we don't really know what's happening between uh, the, the traffic sensors. Um, so this TSC actually take the input from those uh, uh, traffic sensors, then try to estimate what's happening between the traffic sensors. So then we can got the full field traffic information and this type of information can be very useful. So for example, when we're trying to do the trajectory planning for connect, connect auto, autonomous vehicles, this type of information can be very useful. So that is the, uh, the purpose of the TSE, the traffic state estimation. So in the literature, there are so many TSE models has been reported and uh, most of them are developed with the macroscopic traffic models. And, um, and in, as, as we mentioned earlier, in later stage, um, more and more people start to uh, use data-driven approaches and also one specific category of research focus on the hybrid uh, a method. That means we want to have hybrid the uh, traffic model with machine learning. And the first type of the model is usually called hybrid physics data or data augmentation. So, so the general concept is very straightforward. So we have the uh, we, we we grab some data from 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 traffic sensors, and at the same time we implement the traffic flow model to, to generate some additional data. So then we combine the data from sensors and the data from traffic flow models uh, uh, as as a whole data set, and then we develop develop the the machine learning model. So they, this is uh, the first type of hybrid physics data model. Uh, the second category is the physics informed machine learning or physics guided machine learning that aims to integrate uh, the traffic flow models or physics models uh, into the machine learning process. And uh, so, so, so far uh, for the physics informed machine learning and physics guided machine learning, the majority of them are uh, based on the neural network models. So uh, uh, um, uh, as we, 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 we may notice the neural network is famous of overfitting. So in that case, even, even though you are bringing the knowledge from the classic traffic flow models, because, but when, when your data quality is bad, uh, still these two type of model, physics informed machine learning and physics guided machine learning has a limitation to deal with the data noises. So that's why uh, in this uh, study, we introduced the physics regularized machine learning based on the Gaussian process. So Gaussian process is a non-parametric machine learning uh, model that will be uh, uh, more resilient uh, to the data noise. So that's why we pick the Gaussian process as a base model in this physics regularized machine learning. Um, so in terms of the methodology, there's a lot of uh, theory uh, behind uh, this uh, PRGP. So uh, later on, we uh, I can share the, the the one of the paper we just published uh, uh, earlier this year uh, that detailed all the model development process. But here I just want to give a big picture for the general uh, logic of 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 the model development in, um, process. So um, by looking at this figure, the left hand side is the conventional Gaussian process. So, so similar to many other machine learning models, you, so you have the data X and you have the expected uh, output Y and you collect X and Y, you, that, that is your training data set. So then you form a Gaussian process and th then uh, uh, that will uh, represent the, the, the relationship from X to Y. So then you have the model ready for implementation. So that is very similar to very, uh, uh, to, to very large body of the machine learning models. So basically from X, Y, those are a black, black box and you really don't know what's happening from X to Y, but you just get a model that that be able to use. And, but with the uh, PRGP, we actually uh, get another uh, shadow uh, uh, Gaussian process. So that is coming from the, uh, the physics model. So here, this, this is the physics model and we pick some random input and generate uh, uh, the corresponding noise based on the, the physics model. So then that will be converted into a shadow Gaussian process. So then with a combination of these two, this uh, we have a new uh, proposed uh, uh, physics regular Gaussian process. And in order to convert uh, uh, the physics knowledge into Gaussian process, or we, we, we always, always say encode the physics knowledge into Gaussian process. So the previous study, they used a, a model called the lat latent force model, LFM, to, 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 to do that. So however, this method usually assume the partial differential equation, uh, the PDE from the physics model are linear. But in transition, we know our, our uh, travel flow model are actually uh, nonlinear, the PDE are non, uh, nonlinear. So uh, this 
uh, previous LFM cannot be directly implemented in our case. At the same time, this, the, those LFM model assume the obtained PD have an analytic greens function solution with a kernel of the latent function. So uh, that's why in this study, we uh, convert, uh, uh, we develop another augmented LFM that directly um, uh, encode the, the, the physics knowledge into the Gaussian process and form the, the, the shadow Gaussian process. So I'm gonna, later I'm gonna use a, another figure to explain this, uh, this logic. Okay, so um, by, uh, um, so in, in the original uh, uh, physics regular Gaussian process that can uh, only deal with one single variable and one single equations. Uh, but in, in our trifle model, because we have multiple equations in our trifle model, and also we have multiple variable to be estimated, including density flow and flow and speed. So that's why we, we can we, we still need to also extend the, the, the PRGP with multivariate and multi equations. So here, uh, uh, each of this F, uh, 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 F um, uh, I uh, hat function represent one of the equations, uh, uh, one equation of the trifle model. So each of them will, will be uh, encoded into a Gaussian process. So then it, the integration of them would be the shadow uh, Gaussian process, which can be fused with the, uh, the original Gaussian process. So um, this is a general uh, architecture of the, uh, of the proposed uh, uh, PRGP. And the right-hand side uh, figure actually show the, the briefly logic. So here I'm trying to use a, a maybe a, a common language to explain the logic here. So uh, on, the le on the left hand side, uh, that is the traditional uh, Gaussian process. So we have the, the collected data, uh, input and output, right? So for example, the input could be um, the time and distance and output would be the speed and the flow and, and density, for example. So, so we have a, X and Y, so similar to linear regression. So this is a dependent variable and this is independent variables. So we have X and Y uh, as a collect data. So then we go through the, the first uh, kernel function. So for, the, for those of you who are not for familiar with the kernel function, so kernel function is a kind of a trick in machine learning that we can uh, project the model from a no, low dimensional ar architecture to a high dimension, dimension architecture. So usually when we're trying to build up machine learning model, if you, if you have a more complex architecture, so then your model performance would be, very likely would be better. But at the same time, because of the, um, of, of, of the uh, com complex architecture, your training time will be also much longer. But the kernel function is a kind of a trick we can project the low, uh, low low uh, revolution uh, architecture to a high resolution uh, architecture without increasing the the training time. So as uh, go through the kernel function, then we can got the um, uh, the the first part the, uh, the the first part of the loss function. So uh, basically, um, the loss function can be viewed as the uh, the the estimated value, the difference between the estimated value and the collected data. Right. So that is similar to many other. A machine learning model, such a regression, linear regression. So th then we have the, the the first term in the loss function. So then we look at the, the second half of the of the architecture. So we so uh, among this uh, collected data. So then we randomly we do a sampling. We, then we collect some sa uh, random data from the collected data. So we, then we name it as a randomized input z. So then we put those z back to the um, uh, the the physics equations. So then do the uh, the prediction. So then we we got the uh, get that through the another kernel function RPF kernel function. So then we generate generate another a uh, noise. Uh, so here here the second noise or or, or loss uh, is if so um, for simplicity that can be viewed as the the difference between the data and the the model output from the the, 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 the physics equations or the, the classical traffic flow models. So then we combine these two laws together in the loss function. So then we form a new loss function and that would be the proposed the PRGP, physics regularized machine learning. So, so this is a very um, um, conceptual explanation of the general process. So left-hand side is, is the aim is to measure the difference between the data and the machine learning. The right-hand side aim is to measure the difference between the physics equation and and the and, and the data. So um, in order to solve this model, so usually we use we need to use a, a stochastic uh, optimization algorithm to solve the model. So basically that would be a, a recursive 
uh, a process. So we have an initial parameter or hy a hyper parameter for the machine learning. So then we, we do that uh, re recursively, uh, keep updating the parameter until the, the result has been converged. And since uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, ob object function, loss function, we, we aim to minimize the loss function and there's a lot of variable involved. So that's why uh, the traditional um, uh, optimization method in machine learning such as such as gradient descent will be uh, 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 computational uh, heavy and, and it will take a much longer time to, to get the results. So that's why we, we integ integrate the stochastic optimization algorithm uh, in, in, in this solution algorithm in order to speed up the training process. Okay, um, so with that, those are general uh, concepts. Uh, I would like to use a, a couple of case study to explain the uh, the uh, the model uh, performance. So the first case uh, is um, um, uh, the in the first case the data was collected from actually four detectors on the I-15 uh, freeway in, in in state of Utah, and uh, so the data was collected every five minutes. So that includes the speed and and flow, and then there are uh, uh, 288 observations per detector per day. And here we have the data from four detectors, and we use uh, the blue one for training, and we use the uh, the the green one for 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 uh, for testing. So, in, for in other words, we uh, take the uh, the, uh, the data from the blue ones as input and and build out the machine learning. Then we try to estimate the travel flow patterns at those uh, at the location that installed with the green uh, sensors. So then we we make the comparison to do the model uh, assessment. And um, so, in order to quantify the performance of the of the of the model, uh, we use the room uh, uh, MAP and RMC, room mean square error, uh, RMC and, and MAP mean absolute percentage error as the performance metric to 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 do the evaluation. Um, so here is a quick comparison among uh, different machine learning models, and so those. Those are the uh, the other machine learning model like support vector machine, random forest, XGB, GBDT, so on and so forth. And so if you uh, and and also definitely the, the pure uh, Gaussian process, so the or the conventional Gaussian process. So by comparing, so uh, the the flow at RMC, you can see uh, uh, the 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 pure Gaussian process can uh, clearly outperform other machine learning models because uh, this Gaussian process is a non-parametric. Uh, uh, machine learning that has better performance to deal with the, the, the traffic center data. But if we compare the pure uh, Gaussian process with the uh, proposed the PRGP, uh, so here we we trying to uh, encode four different type of traffic flow model into the PRGP. So that gave us four different PRGP here. The first one is the first order uh, LWR traffic, traffic flow model. And the second one is a is a second order P, PW and second order ARZ models, and 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 this these three are the the classical travel model first order second order travel models. So, so we we encode each of them into the Gaussian process. So that gave us three PRGP. But but at the same time we uh, we implement another phases equation which is called heat equation, which usually used to represent the uh, how the heat trend uh, uh, the heat transmission. But we, we definitely we know the heat equation will not be suitable for to model traffic flow patterns, but we will go ahead to encode the heat equation to see what happens for the for the PRGP. So by comparing the pure GP with other three PRGP over here, we can see that all of them can clear, clear, clearly outperform the pure the pure GP with lower IMC. And, and also this uh, ARZ and PW model has better performance than the LWR. Um, uh, sorry, I have been hearing uh, some echoes from, from someone. Um, so it would be great if uh, um, all other can mute their microphone. Yeah, that down, now is much better. Yeah, thank you. So um, if we compare the results here, we can see uh, this three PRGP can outperform the pure GP and also the second order model uh, can outperform the first order model uh, as well. So that has been approved the capability of Encoding additional value, valuable knowledge from classic tra traffic flow model into the Gaussian process, and at the same time, if we look at the performance of the um, uh, of the PRGP with the heat equation, so then we can see that um, uh, with the heat equation, we can even 
have a worse performance because the heat equation is not suitable for, for traffic flow models. So these results somehow gave, an, gave us an idea about how to interpret the model performance. So when you have a better or more advanced traffic flow model, then your PRGP will also be better. But at the same time, if we compare those models, we can see that the even though the PRGP can outperform the or can be better than the pure uh, Gaussian process, but still the difference is not is not significant, right? So if you look at it, uh, uh, the difference is only even with the with the best one, the difference is only like five uh, vehicle per five minutes in terms of the flow RMC. So that's give uh, give us a, 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 a question is. Uh, does this uh, PRGP would be available enough to be developed? So, um, so then we're going to figure out uh, the answer to that question later. So, um, um, here uh, I just want to use a, a quick uh, a figure to explain the the conceptual visualization of the algorithm. So, usually, if we try to train the hyperparameter, so let's assume there's only two parameters in the in the in the machine learning. So, this is a traditional. Uh, uh, um, uh, of visualization, visualization of the training space. So uh, maybe the the the, uh, the the data gave you this uh, this training space, and the uh, the physics model gives you this training space. So then the merging of these two training space that gives you the optimal parameter or hyperparameter of the proposed physics regular Gaussian process. So that gave you the actually find the balance point between the data and and the physics model. But what if you have a a bad phases model over here. So let's say the, the heat equation, for example. So then your PRGP will be directed to this point, right? This uh, this point in, in the in the in the training space. So then they will be uh, completely uh, far away from the original optimal parameter we can find based on the good models. So that's why um, uh, uh, we uh, we can tell when you have a bad or in inapplicable in inapplicable phases model. So then your PRGP will be mislead, and that gives you a very bad uh, model performance. So that is uh, actually showing over here, right? With a heat equation, so then the performance will be really bad. So that's why uh, in the PRGP, finding a, a good physics model is also very important. Also, otherwise, your model will be mislead by the physics equation, and that even worsen the, uh, uh, the model performance. And this is a quick comparison between the, uh, the PRGP and also the uh, the classical uh, traffic flow models and for ARWR, PW, and ARZ, then we can see that uh, the, the model performance is always better than those uh, classic traffic flow models. And um, in this robustness study, we're trying to answer the question is, uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, uh, um, with the performance over here, uh, even though the PRGP can be uh, better than the, the, the pure Gaussian process, but still the difference is very minimal. So that actually uh, uh, give a concern of the, the of, of the of the need of the PRGP because uh, when we're doing the, the training and and if you're you're spending like half hour for the uh, the Gaussian process, you probably can spend like three hours or four hours to train the PRGP. So the training training time has been significantly increased for the PRGP compared with the GP. But if your model performance is only slightly improved, so why bother? Uh, bring this model into application, right? So that's why um, here in, in this robustness study, we want to ex examine the one of the main feature of the uh, the proposed PRGP to deal with the noisy training data set. So uh, in the in the previous uh, 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 case study, we, we, we got the data from UDOT and we clean the data. So we make sure the data quality is good enough. So that's why uh, uh, we, we have a very good performance uh, for the, for even for those pure pure machine learning models. But here in this robustness study, uh, we're trying to uh, um, uh, post the process by adding some artificial noise to the training data set. So for example, we add the, the noise uh, with a mean of 100, 100 vehicle per five minutes to the flow, and we have the test data remain the same to, to, to see how the model can perform under the noisy training data set. So here, the actually this um, uh, 100 vehicle per five minutes is already a very large uh, noise uh, compared with the uh, uh, because of the usually the, the the flow would be like 1,000 or, or, or 700 or 500. So this this 100 vehicle per five minutes flow is already a very large artificial noise. So then we by adding the noise to the training data set, 
uh, actually we, we, we add the noise to about 50% of the training data set, also a very large portion of the, of, of the data. And so then we, we, we implement the PRGP again. So then we try to uh, look at the resulting performance. So now if you look at the pure Gaussian process, when, when the, the model is dealing with the, the noisy data set, so now the flow M RMC has been increased to 64.93. So compared to the previous one with the good data, um, the, the, the RMC is only like 39, but now with the noisy data set, uh, the pure machine learning has been increased to 64. But still, by looking at the PRGP, we can still have a very good performance over here. So for the PRGP with LWR and PW, and both of them are around 41. And for the best one with the ARZ is uh, is, is 35.37. So compare with the previous one with a good, good data set, you can see uh, this is 34.75 and, and this is 35.37. So even, so by looking at the result, even with a, with a, a, a really bad training or noisy training data set, we can still have a very good uh, performance of the, of the machine learning. So that actually shows the capability of the PRGP uh, to deal with the noisy data set. So, and, and the logic behind this is because we can borrow the physics knowledge from traffic from model to regularize the, the, the training process. And the physics knowledge can tell us, okay, some data uh, may have some, some potential problems. And then we, uh, the model training process will, will intend to give lower weight, weight to those uh, uh, a potential noisy data set, data, data point. So that's why we can have a, a much better model performance. And um, so in the second, second case study, we're trying to test the model performance which uh, a, a larger uh, a data set. And here we have about seven, 17 detectors and we're using um, 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 13 of them for training and, and four of them for testing. So still those data are collected um, um, on the I-15 uh, freeway corridor in, in the state of Utah. And we have about uh, 288 observations per detector per day. So um, again, this is the comparison uh, uh, among different, uh, um, different machine learning based models. Um, still the pure, pure Gaussian process can outperform other pure machine learning models. And this three PRGP uh, with the, uh, with, with the adding with integration of the LWR, PR, PW, and ARZ can uh, slightly outperform the pure Gaussian process. And, and, and in this case, uh, the PW uh, has, a, has a better performance compared with the ARZ. But in, in the previous example, we have ARZ to have the better performance. Uh, but uh, so, 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 so the main reason is PW and ARZ are the second order models. And we can see PW and ARZ are the advanced version of the LWR. So that's why both of them can always have better performance compared with the, uh, the LWR in most cases. But uh, PW and ARZ, uh, the, uh, we, we, we couldn't say PW is the, is the advanced version of ARZ or ARZ is the advanced version of PW. So that's why sometimes PW is better, sometimes ARZ is better. And this is another comparison uh, between the, um, um, the, uh, the, 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 the classical trifold model out, uh, performance and the, 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 the PRGP, and we can still see that the PRGP can clearly outperform the others. And again, uh, to, uh, in, in, in the, we, when we have the data quality to be good, the, the, uh, the effectiveness of the PR, PRGP is, is, uh, is quite minimal. The improvement of the PRGP is quite, quite minimal compared with the pure, pure Gaussian process. So that's why we, we also conduct another case, uh, robust study by adding the artificial noise to the flow again in this second case study. So then in this case, you can see still we can, we can have a very good performance for the PRGP with the ARZ model and, and compare with the, the, the pure Gaussian process that gave us the 64.93 uh, RMC in flow. We, we can have a much uh, smaller flow RMC over here. Okay, um, so here's a quick conclusion of this uh, study. So uh, in this study, we developed this uh, physics regularized Gaussian process PRGP to encode the physics knowledge into the, uh, the, uh, the, the shadow Gaussian process and then integrate that with the conventional Gaussian process. And uh, the PRGP can greatly outperform the physics or traffic flow model in capturing 
data uncertainties and, and data fluctuations. So at the same time, when the training data set is sufficient and accurate, the PRGP can only slightly outperform the pure machine learning models, such as a GP in estimation accuracy. But when the training data set is noisy, the PRGP was approved to be much more resilient or robust uh, com uh, compared with a pure Gaussian process. So that's, that actually shows the, uh, the major uh, a benefit of developing the PRGP when you have a noisy data set. And it also can be um, uh, noticed that the encoding the more advanced the physics model can always help the PRGP produce better, better performance. But if you are trying to encode in a bad physics model, so that can even downgrade the model performance. So that's why uh, we say we, we somehow convert the black box model into a grid box model. So we offer uh, 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 some way to try to interpret the model performance results. And um, so there's more, more detail of the paper can be seen from this, uh, from this, this publication. Um, uh, so this, this, is, this, uh, this paper actually detail all the model development and all the case study results. And also we have some other working paper related to this theory, such as we can have the model to work with the discrete formulations. So, so currently we, we still require the PRGP to work with the PDE of, uh, of the physics model that require the physics model to be a to be continuous models. But in, in transmission, we have many models that, that are discrete models. So this paper actually addressed the issue uh, how to uh, 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 use the PRGP to deal with the discrete formulations. And, and, and this, um, uh, this two, two paper actually addressed the, uh, um, uh, the issue of reducing the, the training effort. So one is uh, by using the streaming learning uh, architecture, and which is called physics regularized uh, streaming learning. The other is uh, using the gradual learning technique. So both of them are aims to uh, reduce the, the training effort and also achieve the similar performance. And um, so I would like to acknowledge the support of, of this uh, NSF Career Award. And um, also um, we have other applications, ongoing applications supported by another NSF research. And so uh, in, in, in my presentation, the PRGP has many use to deal with the macroscopic traffic flow theory. But at the same time, we can implement the, uh, the, 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 the physical regular machine, machine, machine learning to deal with the microscopic traffic flow model, such as the car falling model as well. So we have been using uh, this model to uh, uh, predict the, 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 the trajectories of the human driven vehicles. So then we implement that in the, in, in the mixed traffic condition. Uh, uh, then we can uh, try to assess the, the safety performance of the uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, in, especially in the, in the winter seasons. So when, they, when we have the, uh, the roadway to be slippery, that covered by ice and snow, and, and how, uh, so then the vehicle behavior and, 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 and the vehicle trajectory will be changed because of the slippery driving conditions. So we can use a PRGP to capture that. So then uh, try to estimate the, the safety risk in for the autonomous vehicles in those winter seasons. So this is another ongoing application that of the PRGP uh, at, at, at more a microscopic level. Yeah, um, that's pretty much everything I want to share today and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Terry, for this presentation and share with us the, the new diagram and also applications. Um, so audience, do you have any questions? If you do, please feel free to unmute and speak out your your questions. And for the students in the classroom, you know, you can pass that to Zhao Hui or you can type in the, uh, yeah, you can pass that to Zhao Hui. So, um, Terry, um, I was wondering, you mentioned that, you know, the physical models are very important to obtain good performance of this new method. Um, then I was wondering, can can that be used for for validating the physical models um, in reverse? Like, if the physical models does not show good performance, can we say that the physical model is not a very good one? Um, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Um, to to be honest, we never tried that, but I I can see that could be one potential application of this message. And and also um, um, one of one of the benefit of this model is because we have the 
loss function from the physics model and the uh, uh, we have the loss from the physics model and the loss loss of from the from the machine learning. So mm -hmm. in this case, that that can also offer a very convenient way to even calibrate the physics model. So if you just uh, just to change the weight of the machine learning to be zero, so then the model will be downgraded to a, a pure physics model. Then we can we can still run the same program to to train the the, the, the physics model and, and then use that for the performance evaluation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also just to follow up is that, um, you know, um, so you showed that like a different variations of the PRML, like a first uh, degree, second degree, et cetera, et cetera. It shows like the flow, the, the performance measurement of the flow, the speed and the other um, uh, variable are all different. You know, the you know, sometimes this uh, PIML perform better for flow, but next time probably another one perform better for speed. So does mm -hmm. that mean that every time actually for whoever is applying the method, they have to run all different variations of PRGP and select whatever the best for each of the outputs that, you know, they're looking into? Yeah, uh, yeah, this is a very good question. So uh, during my presentation, I I actually spend all of my time to look at uh, the, flow. the flow flow, but I don't really talk about the the speed. So uh, by looking at the speed, you can see um um actually they're all of them are very similar. So 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 um so the main reason is um um because the speed MAP is or RMS is is already very small. Mm -hmm. So it like it's like two two miles per hour or three miles per hour. So, so that leaves a very limited space for us to to make improvement because um, like two percent or three percent is already the best performance we can achieve for for almost all, all kinds of models. So that's why uh, you can see um, maybe sometimes this would be better, sometimes this would be better because those are just like a, a very random random event. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of flow, that would be more difficult to deal with in, in this case. So, mm -hmm. so that that really depends on the data 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 quality. So, if your data uh, contains a, a lot of fluctuation of the speed, maybe estimation of speed would be a diff more difficult task. But here, in our example, because we don't have too many fluctuation of the speed, so that's why flow becomes a more difficult task to deal with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, so, audience, maybe you have more questions. Do we have more questions for Dr. Young? Sure, yes. Uh, Hi. Oh. oh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, oh, hi, uh, Xinfeng. Uh, this is Zhong Miao uh, from UCF. Um, so a uh, uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, I'm interested in the noise uh, you add uh, to the experiments uh, you presented. So is the noise like, uh, uh, just a normal distribution with the mean, or you you try to kind of uh, uh, try to approximate some like cyber attacks kind of noise. So basically, my question is: uh, Have you uh, looked at some intentionally uh, data modification, and if this model is still robust for that kind of scenario? Yeah, this Thanks. is a very uh, very very good question. So um, in in this study, we. We actually just uh, randomly generate the noise and based on the the, the, the Gaussian distribution, and, and and with a mean of uh, one vehicle per five minutes to the flow. So, um, but you 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 indeed raised a very um, very good um, potential application direction from our model, which is uh, there's some some intentional maybe cyber attack or or any other action to to add the artificial noises. Um, so uh, I, I don't really know um, whether or not the model will be um, applicable to that case, but um, 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 based on what we observe here, uh, it is very likely this PRTP can still can still perform very good performance under that situation. But um, but we 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 I we, I don't know the the exact answer to that question, but that is definitely a very good good, good direction we can try out in, in the future research. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, glad to have you here, Zhang Miao. Um, can I follow up uh, Zhang Miao's question? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, so for the noise uh, training data set, you know, for the case that you have shown, it's like you added artificial noise into that. And mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, this is something kind of being controlled. What happened if you have a real collected noisy data? Will you mm -hmm. be able to identify those noises? Um. So we are we're not be able to identify the noises. So that's why so usually it's very hard to identify noises. So that's why um, in this model we we directly grab all the data, and some some of them are good data, some of them are bad data, and we 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 treat them as a whole data set for training. Um, and for for the first case study, um, we we uh, we gr we directly grab the data from U dot, but originally the data already contains some noises, and uh, but we have another project with them to use some data screening algorithm to to screen out the the data noise. So so that's why we we in the first case study we 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 make sure we have a uh, we have a pretty good uh, data uh, to use to show uh, the performance of different model under good data set. And then in the second case study we 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 based on the good data set then we add some artificial uh, noises. But uh, there's another um, TRB paper, we, we actually try to directly use the original data set from UDOT we, without doing the, the first round of data screening. And um, so in, in that paper, we, ha we have shown that the, uh, the performance of those, uh, um, of, the, of the Gaussian process is about maybe um, 45 to 50. Mm -hmm. and, and the PRGP can still be a very good performance, at, like such as 30, 33, 34. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and Shao, you have a question, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, and, and Terry, uh, it's great work. Again, you know, I read your paper before and I uh, sort of talked with you about this, but I mm. also enjoy this full presentation. Um, you know, so there is a, an assumption about uh, the deviation between the physics model and uh, the uh, actual mirrors that that is a that the sort of like the deviation needs to be captured by some Gaussian process right yeah that's uh, right yeah yeah and uh, you're sort of the the the, the idea is that you look at the, the difference between the physics model prediction and uh, the actual mirrors and you try to use a Gaussian process to model the uh, errors or differences and uh, so well, have you and um, i think uh, you know is is there a way to test the distribution of the errors like whether they're they follow gaussian distributions or would there be any other patterns that that uh, we could if, if it is not necessarily the gaussian process if it has certain um, you know other uh, distribution patterns. Could we just uh, um, modify or like in, further extend your framework to um, to other types of physic physics regulated uh, systems? I mean, there could be other statistics model or data driven models uh, other than Gaussian mm -hmm. distributions. I'm not sure if uh, maybe Gaussian distribution captures a lot of uh, the, the transportation domain problems. I'm just uh, curious and thinking of uh, the possibilities of uh, mm -hmm. extending this nice framework. Yeah, that, that's actually that's a very interesting question. So when we sub we submit a paper um, to the journal and, and we, we actually got the same question from the reviewer. <laughs> so um, so here I, I think the probably there's some uh, mis mis miscommunication or misunderstanding over here is um, uh, for the Gaussian process we actually don't assume so we don't assume the noise of the data follow the Gaussian distribution. So, so the, 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 the distribution itself can be any, any type of distributions. So, so there's an, no such restri restriction um, on, on, the, on, on the noise to be uh, Gaussian distribution. So, so if, if, we, if we, we have a very strong assumption of having all noise to be uh, Gaussian distribution, so then we can go back to use the stochastic extension model which just add one one error turn to the physics model, then that can solve the problem. So, um, so here we have uh, um, in our response letter to the viewer, we have shown the uh, uh, the, the distribution of the noise. Uh, some of them are 
are are are more like a Gaussian distribution. Some of them are more like a gamma distribution or or any any even any other type of distributions. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Terry. And we do have a question in the meeting chat from Coco Long. Um, it said, thank you for your one for sharing a question with a nice physical model with a small predicting error guarantee the effectiveness of PRGP based on it. Did you check the predicting error of the physical model first and then heat model performed badly? No, oh, the um, second sentence does not sound right. I'm not sure if if I got a um, uh, let's question. Speak it slowly. Okay, a question. Will a nice physical model with a small predicting error guarantee the effectiveness of PRGP that's based on the physical model? Um, so um, I, I think in in the in the domain of machine learning, we, we never we never gonna see it guaranteed because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, some sometimes it, it will it will take you some time to 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 train the hyperparameters of the machine learning to give you the good performance. I think I think that's that's probably all researchers are doing right now is they gotta grab the data and and they they they, they try different ways of train the hyperparameters to sort in order to get a, a better performance. So so I, I would never see. Uh, the model will, will, will guarantee you to get a good results, but uh, what we can a more conservative way is uh, we can see that uh, with a with a certain training efforts and 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 a, a, a good or better physics model will be very likely to uh, to to ensure the PRGP can produce better uh, model performance compared with the pure machine learning models or any other PRGP with a with a with, with a, uh, a a bad or, or worse uh, physics models, I I I I I couldn't say that is guaranteed, but it's it is it, very likely that would be happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the second question is related to one slide where you show the illustration of the modeling framework. So if we go there, maybe I can help. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, not that one, the, uh, the, the one that shows like left part and the right okay. part, yeah, this one. So I think the question was regarding to, you know, you randomly select some inputs and there's a predicting model, right, using the mm -hmm. physical uh, equation. So the question was, um, you know, how this, how this part of process would impact the effectiveness of the entire PRML? Mm -hmm. So have you looked into that? Oh, okay. Um, so um, uh, so maybe I will tie that with the solution algorithm. So, so solution algorithm is kind of a recursive process. So, uh, so, so, general, so, so general logic is like this way. So, so, so starting from step zero, we, we, we build up a, a, a Gaussian process or, or a pure machine learning model. So then we got the model ready. So that model would be this, uh, uh, this original uh, uh, F, F hat. So then we select some randomized input from the, from the training data set. So then we put, put that into, we, we put that into the obtained model, then do the prediction. So then you have your pre prediction ready. So those will be the basic, the variables of the traffic flow, pa traffic flow patterns, speed and density and the flow. So then you, you can substitute those variables back to the physics equations, right? So for the physics equation, for example, you, your physics, physics equation could be A equals B plus, plus C. So your prediction given by the original machine learning would be a predict A, predict B, and predict C. So by physics equation, we know A should equals B plus C, but, uh, but, 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 but given the, the output of the machine learning, definitely A would not equals B plus C. So there will be a difference between A, a a and, and B plus C. So that difference would be treated as a, a physics based on not loss, loss. So that that would be add back to the the, the machine learning. So then we we we, we use the new uh, loss function to build up a new machine learning. So then we go back to the right hand side again. So now we have a new machine learning. So we do the prediction again, then get back that back to the physics equation, then calculate another round of the uh, physics loss, then get back to the to the loss function. 
So, so that is how the recursive process uh, 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 works over here. Thank you. And I think I had a follow up uh, comment, maybe not question says, that means we can only determine which physical model will work better with um, GP only after we combine it with the GP model and test it. But I think there are other ways of testing if the physical model works, you know, which one works better, right? Yeah, so so um, theoretically, uh, if, you're, if, if, if you go ahead to implement your physics model to, to address a specific problem and, and you find your model A uh, is better than model B, so then when you're trying to encode the, both model A and model B into the Gaussian process, so it's very likely that PRGP with model A would be better than PRGP with model B. It is, it is very likely that would be happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions from audience? All right, if not, I want to thank Terry again for his wonderful presentation, again for being here with us. And the audience would like thank you for answering all the questions as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. <laughs> thank you. By the way, uh, there are pizza in the yeah. color tour too. So if you are on campus and you haven't had your lunch yet, you're more than welcome to go to yeah. color tour too and uh, get some pizza. You can contact Zhao Hui, who's there already. Okay. All right. Thank everybody. And I'll see you next week, next Friday. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.